I'm Dr. Tara Tobias, physical therapist here at Orlando Neurotherapy, and today what we're going to do is we're going to go over an upper extremity progression. The reason I brought in my model here is because he's a good representation of what it looks like for someone who is in the flaccid phase, meaning they haven't quite gotten any movement back, they don't have a lot of tone, so their arm isn't doing a lot of involuntary flexing or balling up, but they're in the early stages, maybe they're just now starting to get a little bit of movement, and this exercise progression that we go through today would be a perfect place for you to start. So, good investment is an air splint. You would want to get one, a rehab air splint. You can buy them on Amazon. They have fracture air splints that are used um, for like sporting events. I have purchased one just to kind of see if it would work the same, and they really don't. Um, they don't have the same, um, they're not as durable, so they don't hold their air as well, and they really aren't going to do what they're intended to do for the purpose that we're going to use it today. So make sure you buy a rehab one. And again, I bought this on Amazon. So the way that these work is for someone who you are working with to get their arm strength back. You slide the arm in here. And then you pump it up with air. Now what the air does is it applies some deep pressure. So this is actually a good activity for someone who um, maybe is starting to get a little bit of tone. Deep pressure can help to kind of inhibit some of those overactive muscles. So you would need help. Um, you would need someone to help you put this on. But you can see what it does is once you have it pumped up with air, it helps to hold that elbow straight. So what this allows you to do um, is it allows you to isolate joint movement. So a lot of times when you recover from a stroke, you have combinations of movements that um, start emerging um, where multiple joints work together. It usually becomes counterproductive if you don't kind of start breaking those apart and isolate each joint so that it can move independently of the other joints. When they're all working together, um, it's more difficult to gain some of the coordination and the control that you need for activities later on. So soon, this is something that you should begin as soon as you have had your stroke. Even if you feel like you have no movement in that arm, you put this on, that deep pressure, helps to kind of give feedback to the brain, kind of remind your brain there is an arm over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the Swifter, like I had mentioned in another video. This is literally just a Swifter mop, which I love because they're very lightweight. I have a little base that I made for it that's a little bit heavier, so it helps to hold it in place a little bit more so it doesn't slide around on the ground. And these straps are Nylatex straps. Nylatex, N-Y-L-A-T-E-X. These are also purchased on Amazon and very great to have. So this is what the setup should look like once it's done. Again, this is an air splint. This blue strap right here, they're really nice because they have a little bit of a rubber grip on the bottom of them. Nylatex, N-Y-L-A-T-E-X. That was also purchased on Amazon. Um, really helps them to stay in place with that rubber backing that it has on. So you can see, even someone that has no muscle strength right here can start what we call isolating that joint movement. So right now you're isolating that shoulder movement. If you have someone who can help you, have them bring it in. Usually these muscles right here, the ones that pull that arm in, those become a little bit overactive. Um, so you don't want those muscles to be overworking. So what you want to do is kind of have maybe someone else pull it in for you so you're not overworking those muscles. And then your job is to kind of just push it out. Push it out. Now, if you can't do that, or you're already starting to get some overactivity in these muscles that pull your arm in, what you can do is you can start angling this. So you can see I've kind of angled it. 
moved the base in a little bit, then you've got some gravity assistance. Okay? You have some gravity assistance here. Okay? So then your job here, if you have overactivity that's pulling your arm in, that gravity assistance, you want to think relax. Relax. Unfortunately, once you start to get that overactivity, if you start telling yourself, move, 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 or you send it active commands, the overactive muscles are actually going to kick in, and it's going to be even harder to get the muscles working that are underactive, which are the muscles that we're working in this case. Okay? So you're going to go here. Here. Okay? Here. Good. So you can also progress this to standing. Um, sometimes the muscles that pull in become even more overactive once you're standing. So then you could um, apply this again and again work on that relaxing. Just bringing it out and relaxing. Alright, so that's, that's um, isolating shoulder movement in one plane. Okay, we are going to have to work a little bit of the rotation as well. This is not working that, so we'll have to change our position a little bit to work that, and I'll show you that next. So for this next activity, I changed our position a little bit. I had to sit him on a higher, a little bit of a higher surface, so you are going to want to have like a little bit of a higher chair to do this. My Swifter doesn't adjust um, to go down low enough. But you want the swifter height to be just about at elbow level when you're sitting and the swifter is on the ground. And so now you can see the reason I like showing this to you guys on him is it kind of really does represent what it's like not to have any um, strength in your arm or not to have any of the muscles really actively working a whole lot on their own. Um, so for this one, if you are still in that flaccid stage, um, this takes the gravity out of it. So if you're still in that stage where you're not really getting a whole lot of movement voluntarily on your own, then this is a great one to do. So it takes gravity out of it, and you really want to work what we call that external rotation. You can see everything here stays still. So this whole bone, you don't want it moving out to the side. You're actually rotating kind of around an axis. Okay, and you can kind of see that it's fairly easy to do. Um, if you need a little bit of help, again, just like the last exercise, you just kind of angle it in a little bit, and then the weight of your arm, his arm is kind of light, so you're not seeing it as much, but you can almost use gravity to help you, which is a great way, remember, we're trying to, it's not cheating, some people, um, some of my patients tell me that they think they're cheating when I set them up like this, but it's not cheating, but remember, we are working on getting a connection, so we want your brain to connect with this movement okay so it's not cheating what we're doing is we are making setting setting your arm up for success so that your brain can start to reorganize and form a new pathway to perform this movement okay and this one's a really important one because that rotation is very important for reaching overhead. Um, so, and what happens a lot of times is the first one that comes back and becomes very strong is pulling the arm in and across this way. So, that's why this is, is um, as soon as you start your recovery, this should be an activity that you incorporate into there. Same thing with reaching, an early reaching exercise or in order to get to a point where you can reach with this arm, you can start kind of pushing it forward, okay? Again, if you angle it back a little bit and you tip it this way a little bit, now you're using gravity and the weight of your arm to kind of help you with that, okay? If you have someone to help you, have them pull it back, and then you push it forward. Make sure that you're not using your trunk and leaning forward to do that or twisting your body to bring it forward. Make sure all this is staying nice and still.
and just the arm is moving. Very, very important exercise to grasp early on in your recovery. Again, some of the muscles in the arm become very tight very fast and start becoming overactive and they become a huge, a big problem later on down the road if you don't start getting the underactive muscles a little bit stronger and make a connection with those muscles as well as you're going along. Okay? So you can see how you can use gravity just kind of push it forward. That one. And then the rotation out to the side this way. Okay. And actually this reaching one, eventually, I mean, you can progress it to where you are raising it up a lot higher. Okay. If I had another stool, I'd set it right here. And you're pushing up. Pushing up. Pushing up. Pushing up. 